Hey everybody, um, because some people are having trouble accessing the Ed Puzzle, I have no idea why, and I'm trying to resolve it, but to no avail. So, this is the Ed Puzzle video, and at least you'll be able to see it, even though you won't be able to answer the questions directly. You can type them up in a doc and then send them to me, okay? Um, so, here goes the video. Okay, everybody, so here we are talking about Newton's first law again. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion, unless they are acted on by an unbalanced net force. Um, so in our last example, we used a single car, um, this blue hot rod here, and it rolled down a ramp and slammed into a wooden post. And when it did, a penny placed on the hood of the car flew forward because the car stopped, but the penny still had motion, and there was no unbalanced force applied to the penny. So the penny flew off, simulating a passenger or driver um, in an accident, and flew out of the car and across the table. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we add a second car to that equation. So um, to simulate this, I've got the same ramp we had last time, and I have um, couple of oil barrels, one on each side of my red car. On the red car, I'm going to go ahead and place a dime. Now, the only reason I'm using a dime and not a penny is so that it's easier to tell which coin came off which car. It's hard with two pennies to see which one's which. Um, and it shouldn't affect our results. They're pretty similar in size and weight. So I'm going to put the penny on top of the blue car and the dime on top of the red car. Now I'm going to drop this car from 20 centimeters up the ramp, and it's going to roll across the 20 centimeters and rear end the red car. And what I'd like you to do is take a second right now to tell me which way is this blue car's penny going to go? Is the penny going to go forward or backward, away from the ramp or towards the ramp? So take a second to write down your answer for the first question and pause the video if you need to. And then um, I'm just going to take the first option every time, not necessarily the right one. Now, once you've made that hypothesis, it's time for your second hypothesis. What about the dime? Is the dime going to go forward or is it going to go backwards? Away from the ramp or towards the ramp? Again, take a moment, answer the question. Again, I'm going to pick the first one and then go. Okay, so now we have two hypotheses about what's going to happen here. Let's find out what happens. Car going up to 20 centimeters and I let go. Now, take a look at these two coins. When I look at the vehicles, here's my blue car, the crashing car, and the penny right here, farther than the car. The penny went forward. Here's the dime, and there's the red car. The dime actually went backwards off of the car. Let's try setting this up again and running this experiment again. One more time, see if we can get some much clearer results this time. That one was actually kind of a mess. Well, this one was similar, um, but again, the dime behind the car, the penny ahead of the car. And we end up with cars on either end and the people in the middle. One more time, because three is a good time, a uh, good number of trials. I don't know why it's a good number of trials. Maybe because three breaks a tie. It always seems like in a lab, three is the magic number. But in reality, you want to do a test as many times as you can. So here we go. Perfect. That time, my penny flew right over top of both cars, straight ahead, and the dime ended up behind the car. Now, on some really good uh, trials, sometimes what you'll find is you'll notice that this, this dime didn't go very far from its origin in between the barrels. Sometimes what you'll find is 
that this car will get struck in the back and the dime will just stay put and the dime won't move. Now, why wouldn't the dime move? Take a second to pause the video and explain to me why the dime wouldn't move. Hopefully you said that it was because the car was struck by an unbalanced force, but not the dime. The dime is going to just stay put while the car moves out from underneath of it, like a magician pulling a tablecloth off of a table full of dishes. Now, take a second to imagine that these um, coins are people. What kind of an injury is this driver of the crashing car, of the blue car, what kind of injury is he going to receive? Is he going to get a broken nose from slamming his face into the dashboard, or is he going to get whiplash from snapping his, his head back too quickly? Again, take a second. What kind of injury is the blue car going to get? Whiplash or a broken nose? I'm going to go with my first answer every time. And now this driver over here, the dime, what kind of an injury are we going to see from a car that gets rear-ended? Is he going to break his nose on the dashboard, or is he going to get whiplash from his neck snapping back too quickly? Make your guess. Well, the answers are that this guy is going to get his nose broken because this penny is going to go forward. The driver is going to go forward in the crash because he has forward inertia. He's moving forward. His body is going to go forward until it stops on a force, which will hopefully be the seatbelts or the airbags. And in the lack of those, the dashboard, or even worse, through the window and onto the road. The driver of this car isn't moving. He is an object at rest. And the unbalanced force happens on the car, which means that the car is going to go forward, not the driver. The driver won't go forward until the car seat acts on him. So there's a number of different ways that a car can insulate against this sort of an injury, too. Your seatbelt can help to some degree, but really it's in your headrest. If you have are driving a car with no headrests on the seats, you could break your neck pretty severely because there's nothing to stop your head. A lot of car seats, um, the headrest leans forward, and that's on purpose to stop your head should it fall back. You don't necessarily want it all the way up because that can cause your head to still compress some, where if it's forward, some it'll stop you better. Some cars even have an active um, whiplash restraint where the headrest will pop forward in an accident so that your head doesn't go back too far. Um, so that's our second lab, um, and you will find some questions to answer and some uh thought-provoking post-lab questions to complete, all posted on the classroom. And that is the end of the Ed Puzzle video.